Hi folks, this is Ross Johnson and this is my video tutorial on how to press fit overflow tubes into your Kawasaki Concourse ZG1000 carburetors. Normally, um, this thing fills with gas and it gets filled to about this seam right here. And that's based on your float and your needle adjustment. This is where you want it. But if your pet cock ever fails while at the same time you have a stuck or leaking needle, then this can continue to fill up. And since there are no overflow tubes, you know, it'll fill up until the level reaches this high, in which case the gas will start to pour into your cylinder or out the back into your airbox. Um, now, if it pours into your cylinder, that can cause the engine to hydro lock when you try to start it and that can bend a connecting rod and be very bad. So the only way to totally prevent this is to install overflow tubes into the, the bowls here, which will cause the fuel to go into the tube and out the, the drain nipple uh, if it gives, ever gets above a certain level. Okay, now here we have two carburetor bowls. They're actually both from uh, carburetor number three so this one is mine and this one is my was my test piece so this is an extra they're the exact same except this one maybe a little shinier because i put it through the ultrasonic cleaner as you can see this one does not have a tube but it does have a little spot where a tube should go it doesn't actually go anywhere it's just a little divot and over here i've actually pressed in a, a brass tube so here this tube as you can see, it goes down into this the hole which I drilled out. It sticks above the, the level of your fuel. That's to allow for the gas as it's sloshing around um, to not drain unless it re really actually gets very high. And as you can actually see, it does drain. I have the drain screw out over here and you can see um, my finger all the way through it. So the way that this works, the drain tube works if I put my pick in here in the drain screw hole on the on the side here, you can see that it actually um, goes right under the tube and then comes out into the bowl. So the way that this works is your 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 drain screw when it's in all the way, it basically blocks the fuel from draining out of the bottom of your bowl, but fuel that goes through the overflow tube is still able to flow around the screw and out your drain nipple on the bottom. Now, before we continue, I will say that Steve from Should Have Been Engineering, a, a very valuable member of the COG Concourse Owners Group form, he will press in overflow tubes for you for, I think, $80, and that includes return shipping. So really, there's no reason to just not send your carburetors to Steve especially since they probably need other work. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the tools and supplies that you're going to need. So probably the two most essential things which you likely don't already have would be the tube itself and a reaming drill bit, which is slightly smaller than your tube, in order to get the nice press fit. So for this application, you want your final uh, hole size to be about one one thousandth smaller than your tube. And you want your tube to be bigger than uh, this little start of a hole here. So that starting of a hole is 2.85 millimeters, uh, which is about 1.12 inches. So maybe a three millimeter tube or one eighth inch tube would work well. Uh, I went ahead and, and I've decided on a one eighth inch brass tube from K&S Precision Metals. Um, this was a uh, buck 69 at the local hardware store. Um, you can order them online, but you end up having to pay for shipping, so it's 8 or $10. But if you find it locally at a Hobby Lobby or a True Value or an Ace Hardware, um, that's probably your, your best bet. So the actual diameter of this tube, I measured it, and it varies between 1.124 and 0.125 inches. So I decided to go with a 0.123 reaming drill bit, which is what this is. This will give us our final um, sized hole after we drill it out a little bit smaller. So this cost me 15 bucks on Amazon. And then you need 
kind of your initial drill hole, which is going to be slightly smaller than this. So this is a 3 32nd inch drill bit. Generally, you want your reaming bit to take out the final 2 or 3% of your hole diameter. And you also need a way to cut the tube. So for that, I'm using my trusty Dremel with a cutoff disc. And then you're also going to need a drill press. I'm using this cheapo model from Harbor Freight. I think it cost me, I don't know, 50 or 60 bucks when I got it. And then I'm also going to use uh, this bench vise. Um, it might be possible to do this with a hand drill because, you know, there's already a pretty good start to the hole. But I wouldn't really recommend it, and I haven't tried it myself. The next step is to basically want to drill out into the drain hole. With this, ream it out to our final size with this, and then press in a cut section of tube, okay? Okay, so for the next step, let's go ahead and drill the 332nd hole, you know, down through here into the, the screw passage. Now, I couldn't really find a good way to clamp this into my drill press vise. It's a little kind of awkward and I wanted it to be level. Um, and it's got these two blobs on, on the end. So what I ended up doing was flipping my drill pressing surface completely over 180 degrees. And then I'm going to clamp this here on the outside with the blobs kind of missing. And then I'll be able to drill down through the slot into the hole. Um, it's a little definitely awkward and weird, especially the visibility, but it's the best thing I could come up with quickly. So to actually level this plate upside down, uh, what I did was I chucked an Allen wrench into the drill press from the bottom like this. And then by spinning it around to both sides and using feeler gauges, I was able to get um, this thing quite level. From the last one, my test one, I was able to feel when the drill bit, the tip of the drill bit, went through the bottom of the hole here into the passage below. And I was able to stop a little bit early so that there's a little bit of a seat at the bottom of the hole. It's really not probably necessary, but I think I'm gonna to try to keep that seat there for pressing. One thing I didn't notice before is that the two on the left side of the bike, so that cylinder's one and two, you actually have to drill a little bit deeper than on three and four. So just make sure that you're actually drilling the, the proper depth um, take your time. Also, definitely take out your screws beforehand. You don't want to be drilling into your drain screw. Okay, so I have my bowl clamped here to the bottom, and I have the um, drill bit chucked in, and we're lined up. So let's go ahead and drill it. Alright, so i done with that first hole. I'm not sure if you can see it here, but I did manage to leave a little bit of a seat down there at the bottom of the hole. Probably could have left a little bit more, but it's no big deal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drill the other three with this same 3 32nd bit. So I'm here doing the final reaming of cylinder 1 and 2, and I found that uh, it works a little easier if I switch to the other slot in the drill press and kind of flip the knobs out to the left side, then I'm able to look basically straight into the uh, drain screw hole to see the tip of the, the reamer bit as it comes down to make sure I'm not going too far and that I'll still have my seat there. And then uh, doing cylinders three and four, I already did those over in this slot on the other side. Really, none of this really matters and you can just drill straight through and ream straight through right into the opening without having to leave any seat doesn't really make any difference. I'm just trying to do this. I don't know why. Okay, so I went ahead and cut the tube into roughly six centimeter pieces. Um, this is a little bit longer than we need. Don't worry, we'll, we'll cut it down once they're pressed in. So I went ahead and cut using uh, my Dremel with a cutoff disc, of course, safety glasses. 
And then I squared it up on the cutoff disk as well. So what you're probably going to want to do is take a little file and just kind of deburr uh, the inside of, of your tube if there's any burrs there. Uh, pick a side that you're going to press. Go ahead and make a little chamfer on the kind of the outer edge just by you know rolling it along the uh, file. This will help it press into the bowl easier. And then probably want to do the same thing to your actual bowls. Um, just making a little um, chamfer on the edge. Doesn't have to be much. Okay, so I've got my four beveled tubes and my four beveled bowls. It's time to do some pressing, but first we, have, we need a little bit of help. So, you know, our interference, so basically the difference uh, between the hole size and the tube size is probably about one to two thousandths, depending on, um, you know, the actual section of tube that we're dealing with. And that's actually a little bit big for um, this application here and the size of our tubes and how much force we can apply to them. So to help out a little bit, we're going to use a little thermal expansion. So basically if we heat up these bowls by about 400 degrees, it will expand the hole by about half of a thousandth, which is about half of our total interference. So it'll make putting these in quite a bit easier. The only tricky thing is these will be really hot so you can burn yourself. And as soon as these start to touch the hole, they will also heat up and expand and thus kind of killing the, the expansion benefit, but it helps get them started. So go ahead, put these on a baking sheet and put them in the oven, let's say 400 degrees. I'm gonna put these in the freezer. Rise and shine, people. We got some hot bowls fresh out the oven. Okay. As you're pressing, um, you probably want to be looking down the drain screw hole to make sure you don't press too far in. You don't want to really press into the drain screw hole. If you do, though, it's not the end of the world. You can probably grab the the tip up here with the pair of vice grips and kind of wiggle it out a little bit. Now, if you want to make sure that you've pressed your tube all the way in, you can actually look into the drain nipple and shine a flashlight into the drain screw hole and you should be able to see kind of the end of your tube um, kind of right above the top of your drain screw hole. Now it's time to cut these to the proper length. So what you can do is set a ruler at the end of your bench and set the two, uh, your bowl against the edge and you know, kind of mark right where to cut it. According to Steve, you want it um, above eight and less than 10. So right in between eight and 10 millimeters above the kind of top surface here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these with my Dremel and then clean them up with a file. All right, here's the finished product. We've got four bowls with our press fit overflow tubes. Um, there's no way these things are leaking or coming loose anytime soon. So, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'd like to thank the Concourse Owners Group COG, especially member Connie Ryder, who sent me this extra bowl to experiment with. And obviously, I'd like to thank Steve for pioneering this method and, you know, giving us enough hints on the form how to do it ourselves. Next time, I will show you how to replace diaphragms on your carb sliders. All right, thank you. Stay safe out there.